In the hundred plus years of filmmaking and thousands of years of storytelling. In the beginning, there was nothing. There are really only four ways to end a story. In today's video, we're going to explain one of these endings using a script with a top speed of 88 miles per hour. When this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious sh This is part one of the four endings in every film. The sweet ending. Traditional protagonists typically need two things, a want and a need. Wants are external goals that are known to the character. Wow, I would die a happy man if I could perform with Dorothea Williams. Specific to them. I did it, I got the gig, yes! I, I know, I know, Dorothea Williams, can you believe it? Hey pal, you're gonna get hurt! Huh. Ah! And drive the plot forward. No, 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 listen, I have a gig tonight. I can't die now. Help! I'm not done! I gotta get back! But needs are internal goals. I'm trying to free your mind, Neo, but I can only show you the door. That are often unknown to the character, universal to us all. You have to let it all go, Neo. Fear, doubt, and disbelief. and drive the character through their arc. And at the end of most stories, the protagonist will attain some combination of their wants and needs. And you can map every type of ending on a quadrant like this. Sweet, bittersweet, semi-sweet, and lastly, bitter. Our first type of ending is sweet, where the character gets both their want and need, making for an extremely positive ending all around. Everything is great. Let's take a closer look at one of the sweetest endings ever. Robert Zemeckis and Bob Gale's Back to the Future. A great ending isn't simply tacked on at the end. The path to a successful finale starts on page one. That's why we've imported the screenplay into Studio Binder, so we can pinpoint the necessary plot and character beats that created such a satisfying ending. Like I've always told you, you put your mind to it, you can accomplish anything. Now, in a traditional character arc, the protagonist undergoes a substantial personal change. But Back to the Future breaks that tradition. Marty McFly doesn't really change much at all. That's because his is a flat character arc, in which, according to K.M. Wyland, the protagonist is the one changing the world around him rather than the world changing the character. And as we'll see, Dad! Marty's want and need end up being about helping others. I need your help. I have to ask Lorraine out, but I don't know how to do it. All right, okay, listen, keep your pants on. She's over in the cafe. Not himself. He said, get your meat hooks off. In Act One, Marty's initial want is to be a musician, which is established on page two. and complicated on page seven. In the next scene, we learn about Marty's perceived lack of confidence. Marty, one rejection isn't the end of the world. Nah, I just don't think I'm cut out for music. For Marty to change the world around him, we need to establish what needs changing. Marty isn't actually an insecure character. Just perfect. Hello? Hello? But his father, George, is. Afraid I'm just not very good at confrontations. Get the car, Dad. In her book, Wyland explains that there are two ways to introduce the normal world. A good place that will be destroyed, or a less than satisfactory place, which has been cursed. 
and it is up to the protagonist to destroy this world and create a better one. And this is Marty's need to become the opposite of his father. He needs confidence. David, watch your mouth! This scene gives us the issues plaguing each member of Marty's family. His older brother is stuck flipping burgers. See you later, Pop. His sister can't get a date. Then how am I supposed to ever meet anybody? And his mother, Lorraine, is an alcoholic and a victim of suburban stagnation. <laughs> Lorraine's line here is key. Going to prison. We all make mistakes in life, children. Lorraine's need is to fix her mistake and fall in love with George for the right reasons. Not out of pity, but out of a deeper connection. You told us this story a million times. You felt sorry for him, so you decided to go with him to the fish under the sea dance. No, no, it was the enchantment under the sea dance. And it was then that I realized that I was going to spend the rest of my life with him. Because Marty is a flat character, the crux of Back to the Future hinges upon whether it is George that can change. Oh, oh, no. With the normal world established and our character's wants and needs articulated, the plot takes a sharp turn. Although Marty doesn't know it yet, Doc Brown has invented something to solve all of these problems at once. Are you telling me that you built a time machine? and Marty finds himself stuck 30 years in the past. What? You're George McFly. Yeah, who are you? Where he intervenes in his own family history. Like the way I met your father. That was so stupid, Grandpa hit him with the car. Now the story gets even more complicated, forcing Marty to adopt a new want, which is introduced on page 65, here. The midpoint when everything changes. Now remember, according to my theory, you interfered with your parents' first meeting. If they don't meet, they won't fall in love, they won't get married, and they won't have kids. Marty's new want? Good. There's somebody I'd like you to meet. Get his parents to fall in love, or his entire existence will be wiped away. It's like, it's like it's been erased. Erased from existence. Marty has to push George to become a confident and assertive person, fulfilling both George's need and his own by extension. If Marty can change George for the better, his own concerns about turning into his spineless father will disappear. Marty's want and need are now inextricably linked. Right here with me. Come on, Marie. It takes some effort and a bit of cosmic coincidence, but George emerges the hero. George, help me, please. Just turn around, McFly, and walk away. No, Biff. You leave her alone. <laughs> Immediately after Marty's efforts to get his parents together succeed, he is able to fulfill his initial want to be a rock star. Both of Marty's wants and his need are obtained within the same scene. George gains confidence and Marty gets the spotlight. Now, all he has to do is jump back in the DeLorean, hit 88 miles per hour and ride the lightning back to 1985. No big deal. In the end, Marty hasn't changed, but everything around him has. His house, his sister's social life. I don't know. I can't keep up with all of your boyfriends. Hey. His brother's career prospects. I always wear a suit to the office. Hello. Good morning. His mother has shed the extra weight as well as her suburban stagnation. Mom, you, you look so thin. Oh, thank you, Marty. George. And his father, nearly unrecognizable. Uh, now, Biff, I want to make sure that we get two coats of wax this time, not just one. 
no longer the insecure coward. He is confident and successful. First novel. Like I've always told you, you put your mind to it, you can accomplish anything. The setup of the previous dinner scene now pays off. And let's not forget the 4x4 parked in the garage. Check out that 4x4. That is hot. This is the epitome of a happy or sweet ending. Is everything all right? Oh, yeah. Everything is great. Most protagonists in the sweet ending evolve in a positive change arc. And with a flat character arc like Marty's, remember that they don't have to change, but those around them do. Sweet endings are a very satisfying option to end your movie. And it all comes down to understanding your character's wants and needs and achieving both. However, a fairy tale ending may run the risk of being too perfect. Just because the character gets everything, it shouldn't be easy. When you write a sweet ending, you still need obstacles, minor defeats and reversals to make sure the victory is well earned. In the next episode, we'll examine the opposite type of ending, the bitter end, where Michael Corleone undergoes a tragically negative change. He gets neither his want. That's my family, Kate. It's not me. Nor need. But it's still a gratifying ending, and we still will root for him. How is that possible? Stay tuned to find out. We better back up. We don't have enough road to get up to 88. Roads? Well, we're going. We don't need roads. Get what you want and what you need by hitting subscribe and ringing the bell for notifications.